Excellent. This is Jonathan Clark. Good afternoon. It's Monday afternoon. I had to remind myself of that fact. And this is Fully Booked Thought Leaders, where we help coaches, consultants, experts, authors, trainers, speakers, therapists, anyone with a message to share who's trying to build a following and a tribe to get found, get hired, and get paid. That's what we do here. Um, it's a brand new month, and what I thought I would do, because I did threaten to do this, is introduce a new speaking segment. So what I thought would be really cool would be rather than you listening to this crazy guy with a Scottish accent every week, that we actually have other speakers with us. And that meant I just had to talk to my pal Keely because she deserves to be on here. So that is our special guest star today. Let me just make sure we are good on Facebook. Yes, we are. Cool, all right. So I'm going to hand the microphone over to Keely Woolley. Keely, how long have we known each other now, Keely? How long? I know it feels like years, but how long has it been? I, th I think it's only a year and a half or something like that, I think, or a year. Long. It's not yeah, that long. As you say, it, it seems that much longer. <laughs> Which I'm taking as a good sign. Um, it is a positive sign. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, this, this lady impressed me in, in, in lots of different ways, and why she's here is because she's exactly doing what we're all doing in this group we're all running our own business we're all we all want to make a difference we want to impact lots of people we've got a message that we feel is important and we want it to get it out there um and keely's done that really successfully she's also kind of given herself a makeover and a rebranding which is really cool and it's very her um so i'm going to basically hand the microphone over to keely today and then we're going to have a little kind of informal chat later on we can ask questions by all means if you have any questions for anything that she either covers in her presentation or anything you want to ask in general put them in the comments and i'll make sure we get them to her um but i think that's everything we need to talk about um happy to hand it over to you keely well uh, thank you for inviting me along and to start off with so that's really appreciated it's nice that you think my voice should be heard so that's always a good thing <laughs> so, so um to begin with i'd like to ask you all a question i know some of you are going to be on replay but it'd be still good to hear it so um put a one in the chat if you'd like to be even more fulfilled and successful in life and business and as well as being even more fulfilled and successful but a two in the chat if you'd like to have more personal freedom and feel more energized healthier and motivated once you achieve it so where are you now maybe the vision that you've had in life is not being realized in the way that you hoped anymore which means that you're not as happy as you would like to be and you find it hard to enjoy life to the full and you no longer have the motivation and passion and energy that drives you each day or perhaps your teams appear to be going in different directions. They're not aligned with your vision. And it means that your businesses end up with conflicting priorities. You're firefighting, you're juggling activities on a day-to-day -day basis, which may mean that you're taking ages to deliver and resources are not being used properly and money is being hemorrhaged because you're not achieving what you need to be achieving. And possibly you feel like an imposter sometimes and that you don't have a right to be in the role that you're in. And you feel like you're going to get found out, <laughs> which means that you're constantly seeking approval. You're putting your hand up for lots of things and subsequently you're tired all the time. Or potentially you find that there's this lack of motivation, sense of ownership and enthusiasm with individuals to participate and contribute to its success which probably means that you're spending more time in the business dealing with day-to-day -day issues rather than focusing on the future of your business and its strategy. And you don't have any personal time with family and friends and you find that you're stressed all the time, your shoulders are always up in your neck and you're feeling anxious all the time. So where do you want to be instead? Imagine that time where everything is in balance, your why, your what, your how is all in balance so that every day that you go into work, you feel energized, you're motivated, and your business becomes even more successful and fulfilled every single day. And you're doing what you want and believe in passionately. And picture that time where everyone in your business is striving towards a common vision, where your values and your beliefs are aligned, and you're achieving consistency in all that you do. And you're spending more time focusing on your strategy 
and then you have more time with your family and friends and you're going away on that holiday and you're skiing down those mountains or you're sunbathing on the beach with a nice glass of cocktail. Or visualise yourself being more fulfilled and successful and you're doing it through serving others because that's who you are. And you know it's the way that you can inspire your clients to achieve their vision, which makes you feel amazing and that you are feeling much healthier and you're sleeping better and you're finding more time for yourself. And envisage a culture where the environment where everybody feels empowered, they're motivated and they're accountable to contribute to the success of your business which means that they're being creative ideas, there's new innovation, and people are knocking on a door to want to come and work for you because you have a culture that they love. So if you're over here and you want to be over there, then how are you going to get there? And I believe that you're going to be able to do it with the right inspiration. You can do it by truly finding your why and your overall purpose. And you can break those patterns of behaviour and you can build a pathway for you to be even more fulfilled and successful, both in life and business. Now, the question is, why is knowing your why so important? According to psychological to, uh, psychology today, we have 50,000 thoughts every single day, of which 50 plus of them are negative. And 90% of those repeats from the previous day. Yet having a sense of purpose can change that perspective. It can transfer those negative thoughts into positive energy. And when you have that sense of purpose in a business, you feel passionate and energized and innovative and committed. And your outward looking focus is towards serving your business and your organization. And it also means that your professional purpose is in balance with your personal purpose. And as well as that, your emotional and psychological benefits improve through a sense of purpose. According to Retirement Wisdom, they wrote an article citing um, 2009 with 73,000 Japanese men and women, where they found that those that had a strong connection to their sense of purpose which they call ikigai, tended to live longer than those that didn't. Now, here's the thing. With KPMG, they identified in America, 75% of women in senior leadership roles, C-suite, one, one to two steps away from C-suite, had, had imposter syndrome. And 85% of those believe that imposter syndrome is commonly experienced in corporate America. And 74% of executive women believe that their male counterparts don't experience that feeling of self-doubt. And on top of that, 81% have feel that there's more pressure on themselves to succeed, or foul, should I say, than men do. And yet, by fostering that sense of belonging and purpose, it lessens that experience of imposter syndrome in the workplace. Now, the question is, is why would you listen to me? Have you ever noticed how some people fear change and they find it hard to look forward to the future and um, find it hard to look forward to the future and spot the opportunity for growth? If you actually take a step back with me, in February 2020, I'm in this small room, not dissimilar to a child's bedroom. And there's magnolia walls and pictures scattered all around. And there he is in front of me. And he's got this pale blue paisley shirt light brown trousers, sandals, and these glasses balanced precariously on the end of his nose. And as I look at him, I feel this overwhelming pressure on my chest, and I'm struggling to breathe because as I look at him, I say, Bob, the thing is, 
is that when I had to tell Lauren that we were going to all be put at risk while she was on a honeymoon, it was the hardest thing I ever had to do. And I was devastated telling her, sorry, just didn't seem enough. And you know what she said? <laughs> Keely, you can't take responsibility for everyone else. Your priority is taking care of yourself. And yet, regardless of that, every single time I had to repeat that message to a member of my team, I did feel responsible. I felt like I was dying inside. He says, well, Keely, it's interesting. Every single time I'm hearing you speak, I hear you helping others. Why is it you struggle so much to focus on you? You should have listened to Lauren. How many incidents do you need to have before you realise that things have to change? You struggle with your speech after an accident. You have an anxiety attack in Schiphol Airport. And finally, when you put at risk redundancy, you shut down altogether. And you might think you're Mrs. Super Resilient. But everything you say to me tells me that you're insecure. I'm curious, Kiwi. Have you ever heard of imposter syndrome? That lack of self-belief, constantly seeking approval, trying to prove themselves to others? Sound familiar? Now, I knew he was right. I had been trying to be this corporate persona and I knew things had to change. But how was I going to make that happen? Have you ever felt like you're an imposter? What would you do? Now, here's the thing. I had to make some life-changing decisions about my future. But mentally, I wasn't ready to deal with anything. I was still signed off sick. And I couldn't talk to anyone. And then during that summer, I'm in the garden. I'm enjoying the sun. I'm listening to music. And the phone rings. Yeah. Hi, Bob. <laughs> yeah, thanks for checking in. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it was definitely a pain that I couldn't see you during lockdown. Yep, yeah, I took the redundancy. How am I? Surprisingly good, actually. How did I do that? Well, I had to work things out for myself. I had no choice. And I started to reset. I started walking my dogs, doing yoga in the garden. And I had time to listen to books and burn out and started to re-energize, reflect and reshape. And that's when I began with my recuperation. And I learned to relax and I focused on my physical and mental well-being. And gradually, I started to socialise with my close friends and family again. And you know what, Bob? <laughs> yep, the greatest thing about it all is that I realised I don't want to go back to work. I don't want to get sucked back into that corporate persona. I'm happy with what I transformed back into. I transformed back into me again. Have you ever had a time where you feel like you're taking back control over your life and you're excited about what it is to come? And can you remember what you did? Well, I decided that I was going to set up my own business, a leadership program where people uh, were designed for, to inspire others to rediscover their why, their purpose, and be even more fulfilled and successful in life. And it wasn't easy and I wasn't naive. I had no financial, uh, financial um, support. I didn't have a corporate behind me. My husband is medically retired. I've got no regular income. <laughs> and plus, I'm sure you're all uh, experience it, the personal commitment of setting up a business with no experience of running it. But I knew I could do it, despite that little imposter that kept appearing. And with the right guidance from a coach, I persevered and I took control over my destiny. And over the coming months, I did finalise my leadership programme and I even discovered a name which resonated with me and my values, Metamorphosis. Success. And my first week, 
which was such a surprise and may seem strange and was very kind of him, was my husband. I helped him to find his wife, which was really good because he was unlocked his anxiety and transformed his thought process into doing something that he wanted to do. And then I helped one of my clients, Lisa, to find her why and helped her to build a strategy to leave the business that she worked in. And now she's running her own business, which means that she's in control of her own destiny, her own well-being, and doing what she's always wanted to do. And then I worked with a large organisation, a charity, and I helped them to solidify their why and their strategy and have established um, their objective which is to feed the city of Sheffield in a sustainable way. Talk about living your life. <laughs> and today I've now been able to co-author a book, Risk and Reward. Um, and I've also been invited to international speaking events. And now I love nothing more than inspiring my clients by using my freedom transformation formula to realise their work. And the greatest benefit of all of this is that I've been able to work from home full time less days, spending more time with my family, and I finally learned to love myself again. So yes, sometimes it can be hard to look forward to the future and spot the opportunity for growth. And yet, it can be a catalyst for transformation into something truly wonderful. And now, having shared that with you, I would like the opportunity to share with you um, how, my, how I help my clients with the tra freedom transformation formula, which helps them to break system patterns in their mindset and beliefs, um, which has you know, previously resulted in their imposter syndrome. So let's see if I can share my desktop with you, make sure I do the right desktop. <laughs> so, okay. And... Can you see that okay? Perfect. <laughs> so, my freedom transformation formula is four key skills in order to help you achieve success. And the first is reset. And what do I mean by that? It's the ability for you, uh, where you, um, <coughs> sorry, it's the ability for you to mentally and physically reset where you are now, what you're doing, in order for you to be able to begin the healing process and start reducing that stress and anxiety and burnout. And the thing is, is why do we need to do that? The hidden effects of stress and anxiety can be hugely damaging both to your mental and your physical health. And if stress and anxiety levels are not removed, it causes sleepless nights, inflamed and aching joints, headaches, brain fog, memory loss, weight problems, social skills are impacted. And the direct the impact of all of that is our personal life and our business affected. Now then, my stress-free risk uh, solution, or resolution, should I say, <laughs> helps my clients to recognize their key drivers and indicators for stress and provide them with the tools and um, an approach to remove and reduce the impact. The second skill is re-energize, and that enables you to re-inject yourself with energy and vitality to help you with the recuperation process. Sadly, and I'm sure many of you will recognize this, in many leadership roles, working long hours, spinning plates, not taking holidays is almost like this badge of honour in some companies. And yet without taking your needed breaks or switching off technology or taking holidays, that increases the risk and impact of stress and burnout. And ultimately, it compromises your mental and uh, mental well-being and your performance and reducing your life expectancy. Now, my... Gem's well-being journey provides them, my clients, the right guidance to re-energize, use simple tools and techniques to achieve this. The third skill is reflect, <laughs> um, which is otherwise known as introspection. And it's the ability for you to be able to reflect on the past 
and make connections between different experiences and your responses to those situations and to learn from the decisions and experiences that you've made. Um, to quote Edison, I didn't fail 10,000 times, I learned 10,000 ways it didn't work. Now, I don't want you to be having 10,000 times that it hasn't been successful, but I do want to help you to find ways to reflect on the past and be able to see the patterns in your behaviours and decisions, which you need to be able to break or change. And the result of that means that you will continue this cycle of behaviour if you don't change. And your mental and physical well-being just continues to spiral. Now, my empowering growth generator helps you to reflect on the past, see and review what went well, what didn't go so well, when things changed, and what improvements can you make, and how to change that pattern of behaviour. And finally, is reshape. And what do I mean by reshape? <laughs> it enables you to reshape your future, to break the patterns identified in the past and shift the continued cycle behavior that got into positive outcomes. By not reshaping your current situation, nothing will change. It's like the definition of insanity, repeatedly doing the same thing over and over and expecting different consequences. <laughs> And ultimately, your personal life and your business life deteriorates along with it. I think uh, Dumbledore said it well, <laughs> good old Harry Potter. It's not our abilities that show who we truly are. It's the choices that we make. Now, my brilliant smile solution. It helps you build a pathway to change those patterns, reflect on their past, identify goals and opportunities they wish to achieve, but doing it in a manageable way, which results in a visible and physical improvement. So if you want to find out more about my freedom transformation formula, then I'd love to speak to you in the discovery call. So that's key. Thank you. Well done, madam. Well done. I love it. I love that framework. I love, I love the butterfly. I think that's so good because I remember you dragonfly, know, dragonfly, my dear. Oh, sorry, it's a dragonfly. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> I remember you, 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 I remember you searching for a kind of symbol or something that would in, 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 encapsulate everything that you wanted to cover. So that's mm -hmm. the first time I've seen that. So it's, it's come on a long way. It's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Okay. Um, let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. what's your biggest why why do you do what you do I love to inspire others to um, find their why and um, build a pathway to achieve success there's nothing that makes me happier is seeing that light bulb moment in someone's eyes when then suddenly they get a eureka moment and they just go right, suddenly get it and it's it yeah it makes me glow <laughs> so so um, and I just, I didn't realise, um, I'd kept on searching back in my past, everything like that. And it was every time that I was coaching or training um, and developing my teams or my peers and all those kind of things, that it was that that I got the most joy from. And it was sort of reflecting on all of those different situations that made me think, hey, that's what I want to do. That's what I should be doing. And I should be giving it back to other people. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I totally get that. I know in my business, <clears throat> originally been in therapy, <clears throat> excuse me, and then training and then coaching stuff. Um, when, when you can see the shift in people, you, you see it, you see it externally. Or actually sometimes they shift internally, but there's a bit of a lag time. And then, then, their, then their head catches up with the fact <laughs> that something's changed inside, you know. Um, but I, I can totally relate to that. You can, you can tell who in a room is with you. And who mm. in the room isn't quite there yet, you know. Mm. Um, we used we used to me and my assistants used to make a point of what we used to call popping people. We would deliberately make sure everybody popped at some point yeah. on the train. Like he hasn't popped yet. We're gonna work on him, you know. <laughs> um, because that's you know, people people want a change. People 
while we have the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the physical, I believe where people want a change is in the physical. People want a tangible, something they can touch, smell, taste, feel, mm-hmm. see, mm-hmm. Um, whether it's money, partners, house, health, mm-hmm. whatever, business growth, whatever. A mental change, that's nice. A spiritual change, okay. Emotional change, yeah, definitely. I'd like to feel better, but to actually have physical, tangible proof, people pray for it. People learn magic to do it. People, you know, invoke miracles to do it. Um, and when you see somebody's behaviors change and therefore their results, yeah, you suddenly think, wow, that's that's where it counts, you know. Yeah, yeah, yep. It gives you a, a tingle, I think. <laughs> So, I, I mean, I was working with uh, so one of my clients last week, and um, I said to him, you know, have you, how have you enjoyed this session? You know, you know the whole finding your why exercise. And I said, it was absolutely fantastic. And she said, and I'm going to go and ring my dad afterwards and talk about some of the memories that we've had. And um, she then he then highlighted some of the memories that uh, she hadn't remembered. And um, she said it was just so fantastic. So to give back someone that sort of experience, I think is, yeah, it's wonderful. What's not to love? <laughs> I, I often wonder, do, do plumbers and, and joiners get the same, same kind of job satisfaction, you know? Mm-hmm. How good is that sink? Or is it the fact that somebody has changed their life, you know, or, or, or whatever, whatever it could be? Okay, yeah. so um, now when did you go, when did this take place? When did you go from employed to self-employed? Um, so 2020, um, okay. it was um, the yeah the summer of 2020, um, which it, like I suppose many people that you go off and start doing something based on the skills and capabilities that you had when you left the business. So you do what you think is, you know, you pick the path of ease, but not necessarily the path of what you love. Um, I think there's another Dumbledore statement there coming out there somewhere, but um, <laughs> so, personal development good. Yeah, so many of them, didn't it? So, but, um, and and I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, ironically, I actually I was working consulting for the company that made me redundant. Go figure, the usual thing. Um, because I was their Brexit queen. Um, I don't like to use that buzzword. Um, but whilst I was going through that whole process, although I was doing it. And I was getting paid lots of money to do it. I was just like, this isn't giving me joy. And I've basically fallen back into the same trap as I had before. So although I wasn't directly working in a corporate, I was still working for a corporate Mm -hmm. and going through the same cycle of behaviour, you know, the same patterns that you get where you get that um, stakeholder management is an absolute nightmare because everybody's in silos doing their own thing and don't want to work and all you know, with you or for you or um and you know they've got their own agendas and the bureaucracy you know, she's like, she just doesn't give me any joy nope. <laughs> so, nope. something had to change so i decided to make it change <laughs> it's funny how you can outgrow your environment you know and you suddenly go i don't belong here anymore <laughs> i'm a martian here this just doesn't work anymore um, so where you did you have any anxiety about launching your own business did it scare you did it frighten you um when I was doing the consultancy stuff and no because it's it's what I, I I mean I basically fell into what I was doing I was running exactly the same program project so nothing changed other than I was getting paid a lot of money to do it which was great <laughs> so but in order to do my coaching side, I think, yes, um, because it's having that confidence in yourself, despite the fact that I've got over 25 plus years training um, in, in so many different areas and so many different facets. You know, you still have that self, self-doubt, which is obviously, you know, I mean, that's part of what my program is, is trying to unlock the self-doubt that people have in themselves and being able to prove that you can go for us and you can take that leap of faith and it does take your self-belief to do it so yeah <laughs> isn't, isn't that interesting that if you're paid to do something in an employee situation i don't think the imposter syndrome thing is as to the forefront as when you're having to earn a living for yourself and you're now in charge and you're now the boss i think the imposter syndrome then becomes magnified would you agree with that? Yes. I mean, I think because of my previous role, 
I was successful. I didn't leave, I didn't want to be like this big director or anything like that. I managed to get to that position through hard work and determination. But the closer I got to what I call the glass ceiling, it became more of a problem. I put more pressure on myself because I, I had that self-doubt of being able to sit at the table amongst all of these senior leaders, of which 95% were men. And I was in a male environment and everything like that. So the imposter syndrome was there and they didn't realise it was there because I kept on saying, oh, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do it. And, you know, they're all sitting back with their, you know, going, happy days. And I'm putting my hand up, asking for more. And I put myself into a situation where I was exhausted. I was shattered. I was travelling all over the place, doing loads of projects, doing, you know, just taking on more and more and more. And it wasn't until I actually crashed that I realised that I had the imposter. But as you say, now when you're running your own business, because you have to have, you know, money coming in, income and everything like that, it does give you that self-doubt. But I'm absolutely, there is nothing that's going to make me go back into a full-time job again. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so one way or another, this is going to be the best successful thing I've ever done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What else? What else? <laughs> if it kills me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, I love it. So absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And what, what about what about the, the whole freedom versus security thing? Because you know, if you if you're an employee, you give up your freedom for security, right? You've got to be at a certain time, at a certain place, by X number of hours per week. Although I see on the news today, it might be four hours, four 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 working days a week from now on. Um, but you know, you've got to give up your your freedom and do what you're told and have a boss and have mm -hmm. your duties and tick all the boxes then you get the financial security whereas if you're self-employed you run your own business so you're giving up the the security for the freedom so mm -hmm. now you can do what you want you can get up what you want work as hard as you want or not it's up to you but you start the month with an empty diary and you might start the month with an empty bank account and you've got to fill both <laughs> you know and i think i i find that bit fascinating where people mm -hmm. you know depending on what you value higher yeah is going to determine what you do for a living yeah um i know but um i think for me because i'm so much happier um in what i do and i'm not saying you know every, i'm not saying every day is i'm like yeah you know i'm gonna wake up and i'm not sort of having a bit of a panic on sometimes when the <laughs> when the pipeline's not there yep. but i am much happier in it you know i like i make sure that three mornings a week i get up and i do my yoga um and i schedule that in and no one else is allowed to touch that time or i didn't have that time i didn't have it before and i also if i need to step away because i'm sort of going actually i'm finding myself a little bit stressed or what tired out mm -hmm. i can go and, and i sit in my garden and i'm you know <laughs> i'm one with nature and enjoying the space um so yeah is there a risk yes um and do i sometimes worry about those risks of course i'd be insane not to because i've still got a mortgage pay but on the other side of it the joy i get from being in control of my own destiny and being able to serve others in a way that i know can be really really beneficial to them rather than being fixed in what you've got to do rather than what you'd love to do I love the, the other thing i've noticed happens a lot um can happen is you start off with an idea of what you want to present teach share whatever it is but it kind of morphs it kind of changes or it evolves you find that certain clients want part of it but they don't want all of it and another bits that you think are important they don't want so you end mm -hmm. up it kind of becomes a blend of what you set out to offer and what the market wants what your target market wants from you you know mm -hmm. um and i think it's helpful to be willing to bend and willing to be flexible. You know, as long as I'm in that arena and as long mm -hmm. as I'm getting paid to do it and people are getting value from it, then mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be rigid. Do you know what I mean? No. no. And I don't, the thing is, is that we're not a one size fits all. We've all got different ways uh, to be coached. We've got different ways to be counseled, trained, whatever. We've got different ways. So there needs to be a level of um, adaptation. And then, and honestly, when I first started out on my programme, I was initially targeting um, CEOs of corporate companies. Um, and I've actually shifted down <laughs> um, remarkably down to sort of 40 plus women, female leaders, 
um because i think that's where my focus should lie because i've lived you know i've worked in the trenches this is where i come from i've experienced the imposter syndrome i've experienced the pain and i know where i'm going from and as a result of that although i've got a ubs which can be utilized in big corporate companies it's modular or i've got in smaller programs so it can target individuals based on what their wants and needs are and it can grow with them and equally, my UBS that I've just shown you now, that is the first entry point before you even start the process of finding your why, because some people are not ready to go through that journey of, well, how do I design my whole future? Because they've got a reset where they are now. So it's adapted and changed. I mean, actually, it's, it's morphed very quickly within a sort of four month period, because that's the right thing to do, I think. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I think we, we we set off as business owners, entrepreneurs, whatever you want to call us, and it may well look different five years down the line. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that I think as long as you are, as long as your values are being met, as long as you're getting from it what you want, as long as people are getting benefit from it, and you're you're you're, you're helping people, it genuinely moves the needle, um, and you're getting paid for it as well. That's mm -hmm. just like, why wouldn't you do that? You know, I think that's something that we all have in this group is we all have this hardwired need to help and a ha or des maybe not need to help, but desire to help. Mm. Um, and we're coming, it usually works best when we are coming from, we've been through the fire ourselves and we've come out the other side and mm. we've got coping strategies and we've got learnings and we've got principles and we've got hacks that yeah. we can then share with people. Um I remember I worked with a girl who had been um, a prostitute in Edinburgh mm -hmm. and she tried to kill herself three times and she was brought to see me, which is never a good start. You know, someone's yeah. brought to the therapist uh, yeah. <laughs> not because she doesn't want to be there. Um, yeah. uh, and this is my therapy practice. And um, she basically tried to kill herself three times. And, uh, and I said to her, well, doesn't, doesn't the fact that you, you failed three times tell you something? <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe the party doesn't want to go anywhere you know <laughs> something um, is telling you something like that. <laughs> and and uh, all the way through the interview she she kept on shuffling about in her chair and i said what what's what's up and she said uh, my, my scabs are sticking to my jeans she would slash herself with a razor blade every day yeah and they would heal and then it would stick to her clothes and stuff and this was part of her ritual um in the end she became a therapist for prostitutes in edinburgh yeah and i remember thinking who's better qualified to do that job me <laughs> or her yeah. you know um and i think it, it sometimes we launch a business and when we're we, we come across this whole concept of target market and who is our who do we want to serve and all that kind of stuff um we forget the market that we come from mm. we forget that i am the customer avatar you know yeah. if i could reach more people like me yeah the people like me are the people who need help so don't dismiss your own background your own academia your own credentials your own industry you know the, the world you come from may absolutely be the place that you work best in or it may be as it sounds like in Keely's case I don't want to ever go back near that thing ever again you, <laughs> might, you might be able to consult and just parachute in and then parachute back in. Yeah, 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 yeah. five days is long enough um you know <laughs> but don't 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 dismiss what you already know and don't yeah. and don't disconnect from the world that you've come from because it may well be that or something like it is a zone of genius for you and you mm. can operate within that you know yeah and i know it's an important point because the women that um i work with and want to work with it's not necessarily i'm saying well you need to come out of the corporate environment you might love being in that corporate environment but what you uh, life is that you've reached what you feel is a glass ceiling and you don't feel that you are able to be any further within the business or you're getting stressed and anxious in the environment you're in because you don't feel comfortable in what you're doing you, you feel like an imposter so it's trying to shift that belief that actually you can be who you want to be you can be real you can be honest and you can have that freedom and you can do it in the role that you're in. And actually, you can be the CEO of the company. You're quite capable of doing that. But it's trying to change that belief in yourself that you don't need to be um, beating yourself up and going, I'm not good enough. Uh, and I think that's the thing that 
you know, as women, we do put ourselves into that position because, you know, um, ways, you know, things that happened in the past, you know, and we need to unlock them. So it doesn't mean say, uh, you know, you want to move out or you might turn around and say, actually, I don't want to do this, but I do know one thing. I can create something else that's even better and I can lead people down a, uh, in a business that I think that I could be even more successful in and I'd love it. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's not, um, yeah, it's not to take people out of where they are. It's to change the way they feel about themselves and their mindsets and beliefs. So what? What are your offerings currently? Are you working one on one? Are you working in groups? Are you doing corporate stuff? What's your what? What do your packages look like? Um, so interesting you're saying about the uh, packages because there's different modules uh, that are there um, for women that are actually uh, suffering. And I, I'm not restricting to women, but obviously my target is women. Is really about focusing on the sort of imposter and the um, uh, sort of mindset and beliefs to take them out of the, the patterns that are in. So there's that program with its own right. And obviously what I would, would do is do like a discovery call with someone and talk through what it is that they really need to do and, what, and how we can actually work together to move forwards. Um, on the flip side of that, there might be someone that's actually, you know what, I, I, I haven't got the imposter syndrome, but I do want to actually create my own business. And that's a module within itself, which is, or program within itself, which is to find your why, has been able to identify who you are and what you represent. So um, to take a step back on the question that you've answered, it's more after a discovery call, I'd work with someone and say, I think that this is the right approach to take for you. Yeah. Now, my long-term uh, position on things is that is that there will be online program and training where they can do their own sort of videos that will be taught through them. But there's also one to one, one to many or one to one sessions that would be online um, to coach them through the implementation of what it is that they need to do. But um, the current situation is more one to one sessions and and workshops, going into companies and doing stuff, activities, workshops. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Because I, I, <clears throat> my um, past history, mm -hmm. I, I got into corporates like Morgan Stanley and Barclays kind of by accident because what would happen is I'd run a public program mm -hmm. and someone in the audience would love it and run back to their bosses and go, this stuff's great, we need to get it in-house. Mm -hmm. I'd then go in and do some kind of pitch to the powers that be. Mm -hmm. Um I always remember doing a presentation to Morgan Stanley and at the end of it, the guy said, right, now you've got the contract. What was that thing you were doing with your foot? <laughs> going, uh, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll cover that on day four of the training. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, but it was accidental. You know, I, I found it hard to get into corporates from the outside. Um, yeah. so it, it kind of became uh, kind of a segue. Surreptitious fashion, you know, yeah, sneak in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I developed a couple of things that uh, I'm actually going to be covering in a live stream next week sometime on how to actually knock the door and, and get in there. Yeah. But um, yeah, so definitely public programs is a good idea. I think companies also like an off the shelf taster thing. So yeah. I, 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 I'm a big fan of create like a, a 200 pounds or $200 short mini course thing that they can buy yeah, and, and utilize in house themselves without bringing you in. Yeah, a kind of taste for your style and whether you know what you're talking about, and they can judge it on that. And that works quite well as a foot in the door. Yeah, yeah. You thinking of something like that already? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's like I think, like you said, is that you know, the people that you meet through your coaching sessions, it's them that turn around and says, Actually, I think you would be ideal working in the company so yes there, there is an element of segueing into the business because one of the pillars i've got it is all around the the culture the organization um, building and establishing their values and mindsets and beliefs but more making sure that their leaders are being consistent in all that they do because it's that confusion that gets created by not being consistent that the teams are going well hang on you're saying one thing and you're doing a complete opposite and that's when you start getting this dilemma where people have got mixed messages and they don't know what direction to go in. So they feel that they haven't got your back. And the result of that means that they end up 
they don't want to share ideas. They don't want to do, be challenging and questioning because they're scared that you're not actually going to support them. So, you know, that that whole piece around the sort of team building, the culture and everything like that is an absolute crucial point for me, um, with particularly with corporate companies, because that's where I see a lot of the toxic behaviour. Mm. That's interesting. Mm. Okay, so so let's make it really, really easy for us. What, who, who's an ideal referral for you? Who, how, how would I spot one of yours? Who, who are you looking for? Um, 40 plus women um, that are in senior leadership roles um, or founders or entrepreneurs, um, female ones, that um, they feel that they have got that imposter or they're reaching burnout they're tired and anxious and they just want to find a way to move forward and change their patterns of behavior so um and that could include as you said ceos leaders entrepreneurs so what kind of things will they be complaining about specifically like some buzzwords you mentioned burnout you've mentioned imposter syndrome is there any other key triggers um there's one not not sleeping, um, struggling to find their worth, <laughs> yeah, because they just can't grasp them. Um, tired, exhausted, dreading going to sleep because it means the next day is going to come forward uh, again. Um, scared of applying for um, certain roles, um, the lack of confidence in themselves. I mean, there's so many things that actually fit in that criteria. Um, and, you know, it affects their personal life as well. So, you know, you, you find, arguably, you find that you're, you're being far more, um, let's say, touchy. <laughs> Your response to things can be a little bit, you know, snappy. <laughs> nippy. <laughs> nippy. Okay. Yeah, nippy. <laughs> so. Uh, okay. What, 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 what kind of things would I see her doing that would be a giveaway? What kind of uh, behaviours would I observe? Short-temperedness? Uh, yeah yeah well it's, it's some of the things that i've mentioned is that as you say short-tempered snapping um that they are sort of anxious all the time um <laughs> and don't want to socialize anymore you know so they've they've given up the the urge to socialize you can see that they're starting to gain weight or transversely they're losing weight rapidly as well um and you can see that they're not eating uh, properly um and it just, you know, their overall energy levels, you can see that they, you know, you can see someone's gone flat. You know, sometimes you see it in their eyes, you know, they, they've sort of lost their spark and their energy and that smile that draws you to them or, you know, either way, or, you know, they, they draw you to them, or, or, you know. So it's those kind of things. So, <laughs> so if I spot a, a professional lady who's demonstrating any of that, <laughs> how do I introduce you? What do I say? What do I hear? You should speak to my pal Kelly. What? How, how do I introduce you? Um, I suppose the easiest way would be for me to um, uh, um, share with you my sort of calendly um, invite that I've got, where you can. I think we call it the handshake. I think it's probably the easiest way. If I shared you my handshake of what it is that I can do to help them. Yeah. And including it, my um, can be invite, so I can then um, I can put that in the chat today. Actually, perfect. So for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, a handshake is basically a kind of pre-written email, text, message kind of thing. Which so I would provide my pre-written thing, so Keely could promote me and vice versa. So this is Jonathan Clark helps this kind of people with this kind of problem. Keely helps this kind of person with that kind of problem. Um, it's a free initial half hour consultation or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, have a nice little chat about it and see if there's a good fit here. And it's that, that's what, I, what we mean by a handshake. So it's, it's yeah. helpful if you prepare that so you can hand that out to your friends, family and colleagues so they can then be introducers for you. Just yeah. make it really easy. Make it yeah. easy for people to introduce you to, yeah. to get clients. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I think, we've, I think we've covered just about everything. Is there anything else you'd like to say to a new business owner who wants to do their own thing, wants to help people, wants to get the word out there, wants to get paid, what advice would you have for them, for the newbie? Oh, don't forget you've got contacts that you already had before. And don't be afraid to ask for help from them because you know, you'll be amazed 
that your close contacts that you've got, um, you know, particularly in previous businesses, you know, whether it's suppliers or your ex-colleagues or uh, customers, you know, with, that you've worked with, you'll be amazed how willing they are to actually support and help you. Um, so, and don't be afraid to listen to their advice. Um, yeah, there's, there's so much out there. Oh, and some great books. Read the E-Myth. <laughs> yep. Read the E-Myth and the Road to Less Stupid. So when you're setting up a business, both of those are really, really great tips of things not or things um, not to do when you're setting up a business. <laughs> so the road, the road and, and the irony stupid. of it, I, 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 I don't know whether you realize, you know, many people that set up their own business, when they're actually giving people the guidance, they don't do the stuff themselves. They don't practice what they preach. That happened to <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah yeah you know like having a, their own organization i think you mentioned it last week is that that you know you become the technician the manager the entrepreneur the marketing guy the sales guy you're all of these roles and you don't think about the impact it has by doing all of these roles you know you suddenly become even more superhuman than you did before so read those books they are absolutely magic <laughs> And surround yourself with other business owners and and people who are ahead of you who are who are doing the do and getting results yeah. and it's working and they didn't just you know strike it lucky once they're not a one hit wonder yeah they actually consistently do what they say to do yeah. and yeah. model model excellence wherever you find it you know yeah. find good role, good role models of excellence Coll collaboration and relationship building don't underestimate it oh. and don't sell to people because people buy from people they don't like being sold to. <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Excellent. Well, listen, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I love I love seeing you grow. You have you have jumped leaps and bounds since I first met you. And you're a joy to watch. I watched the thing that you did a couple of weeks ago um, in a castle in Ireland. And um, it was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. And I remember you saying you were worried about it. And it just like blew the doors off the place. I'm like, she was worried about that. <laughs> you can't. It's okay to be worried about doing a speech as long as you don't tell anybody. You know? <laughs> you know? People don't go, I'm really nervous. Don't tell us that. We won't know if you don't tell us. But no, you come on leaps and bounds. I love it. And um, I'm glad you're in my world. And thank you. And I'm glad you're in mine. You've been um, an absolute rock. So. <laughs> Yeah. what we're here for the mutual admiration society anyone's welcome to join we just yeah yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> um all righty we will be back here next monday um for our usual uh two o'clock in the afternoon show if you're in the uk or you can watch it on replay if you are watching this on replay where where were you um if you if you've seen us with us today any comments any questions if you want to ask keely anything stick a comment in the comment box if you want to ask us anything at all get it down there and we'll come back to you immediately and um, we will see you next week. Thank you once again, Keely. And thank you. Really enjoyed it. So, <laughs> productive week. <laughs> yes. And oh. don't forget to message me afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I, and I've been trialing out your burst. Um, burst uh, technique. Yeah, yeah. Burst technique. I've been doing that this morning. So, <laughs> is it working for you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. We will see okay. you guys next time. Take it easy. Cheers. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye bye.